This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. It's Josh, how you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, good deal. I was thinking about something, I wanted to ask you... Do you remember when you were diagnosed with autism, or were you too young? I, hmm. so I don't remember the initial diagnosis, and Mm -hmm. I don't remember the initial testing for it or anything like that. I do remember uh, the after effects of it, like at school and stuff like that. Uh, I remember, uh, attempting different med- medications to try and help. Uh, I remember a lot of different therapy sessions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, yeah. But you don't remember... Being told that you were autistic? I hmm, I don't really remember that. Mm-hmm. I know that I had been told. I don't remember if it was right away or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously I had been told because I know it now. But <laughs> well, sure, sure. Even yeah, right. Well, so it's just funny, is because I'm I'm wanting to know how you felt about it. How you pro- and I'll ask all of you. I'll ask these things in singular questions. Okay. I'm just kind of wanting to know how you process that. What it meant to you, if anything, if you found it helpful or not. You know, um, to know um, what your diagnosis is. Right. And, and the opposite of that, if it was detrimental, if you felt like it was hard knowing that you had this diagnosis that made you, and I'm doing this in quotes, made you different, right? Right. Um, in our world, in your daily life, and you certainly your home life, um, it was important because we put um, supports in place. Right. We put... Like you say, a gazillion safety. therapy sessions yeah, in place. And yeah. yeah, yeah, all of those. So it was helpful to me. But I will say this. When they first told me what your diagnosis was, I was like, what is that? <laughs> and people need to understand that you're 34 now. Yeah. So back then, autism was something that... Wasn't known, really. What did, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I I probably had heard about it, heard of, heard the term, mm-hmm. didn't know what it was. Right. So my first response is, "What's that?" And after they explained to me, it's kind of like, "Nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope, this is not going to work." <laughs> and then you know, because I get that first freaking out kind of yeah. mode, you know. <laughs> But also, for me, it kind of helped, because then I had something to read about. I had something to do. Something to research, yeah. Yeah, I had a way to be able to understand you better, and I had a way to um, gain information on how best to help you. Yeah. And, And then, of course, came explaining it to other people. Have you ever tried to explain something to somebody that you don't really understand yourself? Uh, yeah. (laughs) Have you met me? (laughs) It's awkward, right? It it, It, it can be, yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of like, uh, I don't really know. Um, But I was wondering, specifically, how it affected you getting the diagnosis. Because you were seven, and... um, I just wonder if you remember any of it. 
Do you remember taking tests? No. At all? No? No, not, not the initial ones, no. Do you remember us talking about it? At different times, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the... One thing that I would like to point out as a lead into what I'm going to say is that growing up, you have all throughout my whole life, you've always put emphasis on the fact that labels don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, obviously for food or something like that. Yes, it does. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. But uh, <laughs> when it comes to labeling people, it's not. It's not a thing, really. Right. Um. And I think that no, leading into what you to what you asked, because of that, it never. I believe that it never really was an issue of being right. diagnosed with autism mm -hmm. at least in the sense of that that kind of thing of of using it or anything like that it's always been you you've always told me that while you may have <laughs> yeah it's, uh, when, you've always said that whenever... Uh... Okay, so he got distracted because the, because my my parents' dog, Bella, who I call Bean, mm -hmm. and she answers to Bean now, um, is laying... Like if a dog lays on its side, all of its legs go out to the side. Well, she's laying... But by her head, she's laying on her belly, but then at her back, she's laying on her side. And it really does look like it shouldn't be possible. <laughs> it looks very strange. Her left, so, her left, she's yeah. laying on her left side, but her left foot is up in the air higher than her right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense what she's doing right now. Yeah. So, so, so you are mid-sentence. You look down and I'm see her. profound, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at her. That's funny. That is funny. Um, anyway. Um, I will say that from the very beginning, <clears throat> from the very beginning, the thing that I said to you that you're probably talking about is that autism describes you, it doesn't define you. Yes. Yes. From the very beginning, for the, you know, yeah. after my, first of all, my confusion about what it was, and then my absolute denial, <laughs> this is not going to work for me, yeah. <laughs> no thank you, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, and there was probably wine involved then at that point, you know, but um, both kinds, and uh, so, yeah, um, but absolutely, that's what you've been told. Yeah. Yeah, your whole life. Um, and so, I think that that's one big point about that is that I've never, I've never let it define me. Mm -hmm. It's a part of me, mm -hmm. but it's not, like, it, it's not... The end all be all. So it's. It's interesting when um, <clears throat> people see others, and let's just say something. <clears throat> let's just say there's a movie star. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I just read this. I re I just read this little this little um. This little story about this something that happened, mm -hmm. and and Dad thought it was funny. Um, <clears throat> those movie stars are just people, and they go and they can do this fabulous work, and it makes all brings up all kinds of emotions for people. Mm -hmm. They're very good at it, mm -hmm. and so then people have this idea: oh, somebody's a movie star. 
They they're set them on a pedestal. Yes, they're unapproachable. They're on a, you know, like you say, on a pedestal. And that's just the work that they do. They happen to be actors, so this is the work that they do. Right. I don't ever understand people going nuts over somebody like that. I just don't understand it. Because everybody, at the end of the day, they're just people. Sometimes people have found the thing that they excel at. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a movie star doing that. But what about the person in a convenience store that greets you with a smile and makes you laugh before you leave? And yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like is their, their job and them as a person... It's just as important as a movie star. Yeah. It's as important as somebody in government making policies, right? Yeah. So I read this. I'll share this with you real quick. Um, so I read this article about this lady. <clears throat> they were, I think it was England that they were visiting. And Paul Newman and his wife visited this area as well. So this lady went for a five-mile walk. She came back. She wanted to get some ice cream. She went to the ice cream slash bakery shop there in town she walks in there's only one person there and she goes up to the counter and she looks over and the guy that was sitting there looks at her and it's paul newman and the thing that people know about paul newman is his eyes are just beautiful blue like yours just just stunning and um so she saw him and she kind of got flustered and she didn't want she's like telling herself okay i'm not a teenager, <laughs> like I'm a grown woman, I got some kids, I just, you know, just settle down. Yeah. So she gets her ice cream, and she smiles at him as she walks out. She gets out to the car and has the keys in her hand, but she doesn't know what she did with her ice cream cone. So she goes back thinking maybe she didn't get her ice cream cone. She goes back in. Um, Paul Newman looks at her and says, you put it in your purse. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. So she <laughs> So she was so flustered by what how she um uh, perceived Paul Newman to be mm -hmm. and how much she admired and respected what he does as an actor, you know, that she stuck a <laughs> stuck an ice cream cone in her purse. <laughs> She's not Mary Poppins. She can't get it back out <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? And then it made me think, we were just talking about Bella Bean, who's laying here on the floor, like as a contortionist here. <laughs> um, whenever Nana and Pappy first got her, they first picked her up and on the ride home, <laughs> I think this is so fun. I don't know why it makes me laugh so hard. Um, Bella threw up in Nana's purse. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know. She did she didn't do very well with her travel. So she just threw, threw up in Nana's purse. That is so gross. That is so gross. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And um yeah, speaking it makes me think of another just a, a memory out that I was eating I was eating ice cream one time with Nana. Um we were at a mall and this was years and years ago. <laughs> and we go, we're shopping, and we're at the mall like we did all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then she says, I want to get ice cream. <clears throat> so we went to get ice cream. We sat down at the little, what are they called? Food courts. Okay. Um, okay. So, so we're talking. And, she, you know, she can be animated when she talks. You oh, know, no. she kind of moves her hands oh, around. No. And she did it at one point. And it was like in slow motion. She had it in her left hand, and then she moved it outward, even further left, right? When she's talking, she's uh -huh. holding this cone, and she's moving her hand. The ice cream cone stayed in her hand. The, the ice, ice cream. cream that was on top of it. It was like slow motion. We saw it go, and we are like, no. <laughs> we watch it fly through the air and plop down on the floor. <laughs> It was so funny. So anyways, I had to go back and get her different ice cream. <laughs> but, yeah. But the people were really nice about it. They didn't charge me for another ice cream because I said she went like this and it went like that. And it's on the floor. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. That was funny. Um, anyway, so my point is, the reason I brought that up anyway, is because a lot of people have perceptions of what other people are. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. what they have to offer, what they're capable of, and what have you. 
And I just have never really bought into that. You know, I, someone came up the other day and I can't remember what, what we were talking about and why, but somebody asked me if, how do I feel like when people, like after a show, mm-hmm. you know, when like sometimes it's just like a real big deal and everything. And the fact is that I get uncomfortable with the accolades and stuff. It makes right. me uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I I don't feel like I'm glad that what I just did worked. I'm glad that it made people laugh. I'm glad that, you know, it's a man, it feels like it's my groove up there, you know? Yeah. Um, but to be treated as better than afterwards, that makes me highly uncomfortable. Mm. I, I can't explain it, but it's just that whole thing yeah. of, you know, somebody told me, uh, and get over it. <laughs> get over it and, and accept it. You know, when people are saying nice things to you, allow it to come on in, you know. But, so my point is, that if whether it's me or anybody else, um, I see that there's so many sides to people. There's so many facets. So like the movie star, like Paul Newman, it, he was still a human. And so you have a diagnosis of autism. You know, somebody said, well, do you ever think, like, what it would be like if Josh didn't have autism? Like, no, because I only know <laughs> Josh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't say to you, um, you know, just in daily life, I don't say, hey, Josh with autism, would you come here? <laughs> I <laughs> you're Josh. Right. You know, <laughs> right. and so it doesn't come up. We do it on the podcast because that's the point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But and we do a awful lot of we do an awful lot of things on a daily basis because you have autism, but it's not at the forefront all the time. I mean, it doesn't. You do it to help me, not because. It not you do it to help me as a whole. Yes. Not because I have autism. Yes. Yeah. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. So. I was thinking. About this, so like, do parents tell their child about the aut- autism diagnosis or not? What do you think about that? Um. I think that it obviously should vary because mm-hmm. uh, every situation is different and everything. Yeah, right, sure. Uh, but some of the factors I think should should be included in that is the age of of the person in in, in particular. Uh, their mentality of things, I guess. Like, would they be able to understand at, at that time? Yeah, right. And the big thing, I think, is that it should, it, whenever they are told, even even if it's decided not to tell them just yet, leading up to the point that they are told, it, let them know that it's... That uh, basically that the labels don't matter. That they can be a helpful description. Yeah. They can be. They can be. Here's where the labels are hugely important. Yeah. When it comes to getting benefits. Yeah. That's when. Uh, to getting help. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, and honestly, if if you didn't need the support that you needed to get you through school, if you didn't, if we didn't need the help in, in understanding you and helping you to be successful, um, and then needing the diagnosis for Social Security to to help you the way that they do, mm-hmm. um, you know, it what would be the point of other than no. I mean, look, I have asthma. We don't always talk about that. It's a rule, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't say, hey, mom, with asthma. 
<laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it, it's just a little facet. It, it sometimes a bigger, but you know, <laughs> it, it's a part of us. Um. So. You were seven when you're diagnosed, Connor. Your nephew, my grandson, mm -hmm. was three. And <clears throat> I asked your sister Bug about about him, and she said that he was too young to tell him when he was diagnosed because he was only three years old. Right. Um, but then, and he was told when he was about six years old, and he thought it was really cool. He thought it was awesome. So he would tell everyone that he's autistic. Um, and he was in school one day. And there's a show for kids out. It's called Fancy Nancy. <laughs> and uh, there is a there is an episode that they showed at school one day for him. Not for him. I'll say... They played that episode at school. Okay. Not for Connor, but for the whole class. And right. just, you know. Um, and it was called Nancy's New Friend. And it was an episode that has a kid that's autistic on it. And uh, so, anyway, she they, they brought things up in this episode about, like, why the little boy that she just met wouldn't look at her. Why he only wanted to talk about... Ch trains, yeah, you know about how why he's um, particular. Yes, particular, and adamant that things are a certain way. Why, if things are not that way, he seems to yell or uh, get, uh, um, seems to be upset. Upset, and yeah, yeah. And so, Connor came home from school that day, and um, he said that he he just he told he. he when I was watching it, and then I guess he told his mom, and then they watched it. And he would say, oh, was he were watching it? I do that. Yeah. That's like that's like me, Mommy. I yeah. do that. And so during the, the, the this Fancy Nancy episode, again, I'll repeat it, it's called Nancy's New Friend, is the, is the uh, episode. So he watched it, and he it's like he really... Uh, liked it he I don't know it was just really cool that um, he understood it like he saw himself so yeah. they did a really good job of yeah. showing on that episode what that boy was going through yeah yeah and you showed it to me uh, prior to this without any real context yeah without any real context and I noticed a few things in it that weren't actually spoken about what do you mean? Uh, for one thing, it it had uh, whenever he was playing with the trains or whatever, it, it to, uh, didn't necessarily look like he was playing with the trains. <laughs> he put them in equal distant lines facing the same direction, with e equal distance between all of them. Yes. I have pictures of Connor doing the same thing with his dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is true. This is true. He lines them up ex yeah. in exactly the same way. Yeah. Yep. They're facing the same way. They're an equal distance apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've seen him do that. In in the video, there was also he looked at a at a watch that he had on, and the instant that it became noon, right, the second hand going to noon, mm -hmm. he. He, stopped, he put down the train and picked up his lunchbox. Yes. So it was very particular, very... Uh, it's, it's time to eat, so now I have to get stuff off for lunch. Yeah, that reminds me of you. Yeah. <laughs> very, very ritualistic in when you eat. Mm -hmm. And it can't go past that. It's got to be like within, within that... Uh, Time frame, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very, yeah, it's upsetting to you if it doesn't happen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if it's time to eat and you are asked to do something else or you're in a situation where you can't, you get really um, agitated. Agitated. Yeah. Yeah, because you have a schedule. Yeah. And it's supposed to, you're supposed to be eating and you're not. So, 
It doesn't matter if you're hungry or not. If it's time to eat, you eat. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this episode that they watched at school, it, it made a point of... And it was very clear that uh, ha- having autism, it's not bad, and it's not good. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a different way that the mind processes and thinks. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. That, that's what they said on the thing, too, mm-hmm. on, the, on the video. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And they they pursued the question too of of changing the approach to communicate, mm. which was a it was really nice to see that yeah on there. And then the idea that they showed this episode at school, I just think is really a great um, tool for them to be utilizing. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Now, so Connor knows that he's um, got autism. Mm-hmm. He will make mention of it now sometimes, uh, but not a lot. Right. Um, and I think it goes back to what I was saying, is that it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, everybody's just a person. They just function. They do the best they can just to right. function, right? Right, right. So, um, the, like you say, the label is on anything really um, is important. Um, to help to 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 move through life, yeah, helps it e- makes it easier that way, regardless of what it is. Yeah, and another thing that that you've raised me to know, in conjunction with that though, is to not use it as a crutch to do things. Like, don't use it as a don't do something just to do it and then claim it's because of autism. Well, when you were in when you were in high school, you had a good friend named Bill. Yeah. And Bill was almost seven foot tall <laughs> and he we called him the gentle giant because he was he huge. Yeah. And um <clears throat> couldn't, he's so big, and he had uh, ADHD really bad, so you couldn't sit on the couch with him or anything, because the whole thing, you know, is yeah. like vibrating. <laughs> like, okay, I'm just going to move. Because um, <laughs> he's constantly tapping his feet or whatever, yeah. Yes, but he has um, Tourette's. Mm-hmm. And so it's funny that you say to use your diagnosis in a way to like get away with something or right. to use it as a crutch. Right. Well, Bill told me one day that when he was in school he he used to just swear because he wanted to swear (laughs) and because he has Tourette's he knew that you know he could get away with it and I'm like Bill he goes I know I know I know I don't do that anymore (laughs) so so, yeah Um, he has you know tics Mm -hmm. and he you know he can't Verbal tics and physical tics, yes. Yes, that are absolutely legitimate, but he just totally confessed. (laughs) Yeah, when I was in high school, I would just shout out swear words. And (laughs) I was like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. So I do think that that's important that you don't use it as a crutch. Right. And it's. It coincided with the. For me, at least, it that fit in really well and coincided with the with the whole. I keep saying uh, the labels thing, and because I I f- keep forgetting how you how you were wording it. You mean a diagnosis? No, the that the labels don't matter thing. You you would say, and then oh, it's just a description. Yes, not a def. It's not a, a definition. Yes, of who you are. Yes. Yes, and in conjunction with that, that's really I think helped me not to use it in a bad way. Well, there were times when you grew up that I would tell you, Joshua King. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't care if you have autism or not. Do not speak to me that way. Hmm. <laughs> like in the middle, you know, there were just things that, you know, you, you didn't, you would not pass up. No, I mean, you were have always been given permission to express how you feel, right? Because how you feel is important, right? But the thing that you didn't get permission to do was not be respectful. Yeah, in the process. Yeah, you know, and and the I would remind you often. Look. I don't speak to you that way. Don't speak to me that way. Just, you know, back yeah. it up and try again because yeah. that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were some things that I just would not tolerate. and still won't yeah. tolerate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's the part that I don't know what's legitimately an issue for you. Or are you trying to play me here? What are you? What are you? <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh! Uh, and and you've been honest about that when you've been honest. Like sometimes I just didn't feel like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Uh, I yeah I guess I <laughs> I lost my train of thought now. Oh sorry, but... sorry. You were about to say something and I interrupted. Um, so the diagnosis to you, was it ever helpful as you got older to, to understand yourself? As I got older, it occasionally helped to explain to others Mm -hmm. uh, why I did things certain ways and things like that. But to me... I think that it was it was more of a accept and move on. It's an under it's a better understanding of a template, I guess. Hmm. That that's actually a really good way of putting it. Is that it's a is it autism is a template, and that it's not. The finished product. It's not the whole product. It's the. It's just a starting point, or or a part of it that is built upon. I'm, no, no, keep on going. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, so it's a part of it, but I but it has differed enough to make me unique. Make me me. Mm-hmm. And it's only a part of it, right. part of me. Right. When, when you were in elementary school, we would spend every morning putting on just about every pair of socks that you owned. Do you remember that? Yes. And then pulling them off. The, because the seams, now, now they've made socks without seams. Mm-hmm. But they made seams go right across the top of toes. Yeah. And. It would irritate me. Yeah. You would get a sock on and it would feel okay. We'd put your shoe on and then you'd freak out and take the shoe off and the sock. And yeah. So we would have a pile of socks that just came off your foot. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, and then I would put them back in your drawer and. Go through it the next day. Yeah, go yeah. Th- go through it the next day because they didn't have seamless socks then. Right, and, and so it was a real he, big issue. And it wasn't just the, that it was the seam because some the seams usually were okay. It was the uh, ends of the seams, oh. especially yes, that caused issue because mm-hmm. it would be right across my big toe or my yeah. pinky toe or whatever, right. and it would. Literally rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> yes, yes, and the reason I bring that up is because that that is um and that is a situation where knowing your diagnosis it helped me mm. because otherwise think about it if I didn't know that it would I could just assume that maybe you were being difficult. Mm. What's the problem? It's a sock. A sock is a sock, right? I don't even care if they match. Put them on. <laughs> you gotta go to school. Which is 
is a big issue, just that statement in, the, in and of itself. <laughs> Uh, I know. You they, they wouldn't match what? I know, I know. But your sister and I do that all the time. It's like, you know, we just wear... <laughs> <laughs> this is whatever we grab. Um, yeah. And so, as soon as I said that, I knew that was a, a, a it was an issue for you, right? <laughs> yeah, they had to match. Um, but back then, you weren't able to tell me I can't keep this on because the seam is really irritating and it's sensitive and it's bugging me and I can't wear this. Right. But I had, at that point we had a diagnosis. And this was right after the diagnosis too. This was like leading up to it and then right around that same time. Okay. And you would screech and not you were not able to verbalize what the problem was. And so that is a, that is a situation where the di- the diagnosis really helped me to understand you, mm. and to, I think probably be more patient, and to see things from a different way because it's very easy, I think, for people in general. I know this is I shouldn't generalize, but just so easy to judge others. You know, it's just it. it I think that. That comes very natural to a lot of people um, just judging others based on what they think they see when most of the time I think people are not seeing. They might think they see, know what they see. I don't know if I'm making any sense at all. <laughs> I might be talking in circles here. It's like it's like seeing a single facet of a gem and assuming it's not as big as it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, Analogies for the win, <laughs> <laughs> which is is one of the things that I had learned really early on to help explain what I'm feeling and thinking. Well, Josh, even before the diagnosis, um, I recognized that you weren't able to necessarily put into words what you were feeling, and what I was seeing was something. It, it just let's just say a million different situations <laughs> right where I didn't understand what was happening so I would ask you <clears throat> what what is going on tell me like let's tell me what the what the problem is what are you feeling what are you experiencing yeah you know and now look you know at 34 years old I'm still asking you how does that make me feel <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah right and so it helped you to have the diagnosis helped you to explain yourself to other people. But did it ever make you feel bad? Did it? The diagnosis itself? Uh-huh. No. Okay, good. Because it was a... It was like a... It's like a key uh, that fit into a lock. That that then ex- it it explained everything. Well, not everything, but I mean, it ex- it put some explanation that put things into perspective. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of a, a oh okay, and I move and it explained everything. So I mm-hmm. accepted it and moved on. I remember when. Richard was on a podcast with us last time. Mm -hmm. You guys were talking, I think you used the term aliens. (laughs) Like how you feel like you just don't really fit in to this world. And so I would think that maybe at some point the diagnosis helps. And then it also helps to go, oh, I have people here (laughs) that think alike. That, you know, that that, that would get me. And I get them. And... You know, I, I, I'm not as alienated as I thought. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And the other thing that, from the very beginning, well, it's not just that you were told that it's as a description, not a definition mm-hmm. of who you are. But, you know, hand in hand with that is that um, you are not less than. Yeah. Different 
doesn't mean worse. Different doesn't mean bad. Right. Um, I will say, from time you know, getting the diagnosis, your di- your diagnosis, as as your parent, that was really a difficult thing to hear. It was a different thing, difficult thing to maneuver, mm-hmm. just because back then there wasn't a lot of it. Look. And we'll, we'll we'll talk about this pretty soon because you just did a bunch of testing for um, ABA. Mm-hmm. Well, ABA wasn't around when you were a little guy, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. ABA for adults wasn't around until recently. Yeah. So you just kind of missed out on that whole and and well, there's this controversy mm-hmm. about ABA because. Well, so I'm not yeah that. I'm not saying that that's a good thing or it's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that, whatever it's called you need support in life skills you need support in executive functioning what it feels like is there's that piece that's missing that you know we're going to do what we can to buy somebody that's not me (laughs) help you to help you to 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 figure that out okay yeah um yeah but it was uh it's all it makes sense of it. A diagnosis makes sense of what's happening. Yeah. And I would just say that across the board. You think about it. Whatever's happening with somebody, you know. I'll give you an example. Your dad just had um, a cataract surgery. Well, it, it's one of those situations where it's like, oh my gosh, this went horribly awry. Well, it it's actually... Just that it's caused such this thing called dry eye, mm. where it's painful and he can't see and it's not in focus. And so now he's using different drops and, you know, they're holding off the surgery on the second eye until the first eye can see. <laughs> and But my point is that dad was really kind of getting concerned, like, oh my gosh, I can't see. Yeah. Out of this eye, I can't even see as good as I did before looking around the cataract, yeah. you know. And so... Getting the the diagnosis of this dry eye and it can be taken care of is a good thing. Yeah. Like so so with anything, once you know what you're dealing with, it makes it easier. I think. Yeah. What was who was it that that uh would would do that com- that commercial for dry red eyes? <laughs> oh, Ben Stein. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. I'm surprised you remember that. Yeah, I mean, he, he was also the teacher in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller? Yes. Bueller? Yeah. 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 And so, it, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mainly knew him as, was the guy from the uh, from the dry, dry eyes commercial. <laughs> that's funny. But you know what I'm saying is that once you, you know, from, from my point of view, is once you have a diagnosis... You, you know what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You might not have all the answers. You might not know how it's going to turn out. But you can move forward with now the tools that you're gathering along the way. Yeah. Right? But, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear this, but I'm asking a different way. Has there ever been a time when... For you personally, having the diagnosis helped you to understand yourself? I guess. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to... Because you're you, right? Yeah. 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 I've never not been me. Right, yeah. So it's kind of hard to say. Um, well, you know... You're, you say that to a person that believes in reincarnation. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, but I believe in everything. <laughs> so. And of course, what uh, you just reminded me of something Connor would say when he was real little. What? I believe in Cheez Its. No. <laughs> that, that was my friend, the comedian, that said oh, that. Oh, that was, okay, okay. Name, th- yes, we'll give him credit. His name is Bob Featherer. And he is a comedian from years ago, and he had a joke. He says, I believe in Cheez-Its. Yes. But I, why did I think it was Connor that said I, I that? Don't, I don't know. 
I don't know. He okay. loves cheese its <laughs> Oh, that's probably why it came up then, yeah. Yeah, probably. Because we've probably said that. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so it sounds like for you it wasn't detrimental to find out, you know, at seven that you have autism. It sounds like for Connor... Um, it doesn't sound like it was detrimental whatsoever. He was... I, I think that with Connor, because I remember a couple of times where he'd come home from school and he'd be down about different things. And I remember at least one time it was because th- that him bringing it up made things weird for a bit. At school? Yeah. Oh. And uh, and it was just that day. And the next day he was perfectly fine. Huh. But I remember that. Huh. Yeah, I don't... I, I've not seen that in him. Uh, you know, thankfully it doesn't... It You know, it, it yeah. sounds like it happens rarely. Yeah. I If you didn't tell me that, I would say he doesn't isn't bothered by it but apparently I it, think that it, was around the time that he that he stopped using it so often that he would tell everybody right yeah because for a long time he would tell everybody yeah yeah and it's just the way he was processing it you know yeah. yeah um yeah so you know if he did okay and you do okay well over here in our house it's a hundred percent you yeah. know two out of two I would like to flip it around though mm-hmm. uh, that I'm I'm perfectly well it's normal for me to have autism so I can't yeah. really say right. uh, 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 anything otherwise but there are there have been times in, where uh, it has been it has felt detrimental to have that label I guess okay especially whenever it comes to uh, have having to reaffirm with with uh, doctors with uh, things to get benefits and things like that because it is just about the only time where the negatives have to mm. be focused upon yeah. I do not like that part. Neither do I. When we spend, when we've spent a lifetime of, again, like you say, it's not a, you don't use it as a crutch, you know, um, and just do the best that you can at all things and figure out how, as, yeah. I mean, and for anybody, you're just like anybody else, just want to be happy. Yeah. And to get the help so that I can be happy. Mm-hmm. I have to talk about all the things you can't do <laughs> yeah, and focus on yeah. those mm-hmm. for a brief period of time. But when it's happening, it feels pretty intense because it's these entities like Social Security Administration yeah. Yeah. wanting these details. You know, yeah. what we just went through was all this testing and we'll, we'll talk about that soon. But yeah. yeah, it's all about, OK, what let's talk about what Josh can't do. Yeah. I'm like, ah. Uh, yeah, because it that's un, unfortunately the way that I can get the help yes. that I need. Yes, the benefits. Yeah, yeah, is to focus on the negatives. Mm-hmm. And just about every time throughout my life, whenever we've gone to something like this, before or shortly beforehand, you you give me a little pep talk just about every time, mm-hmm. saying. I know you don't like going through this. I know, I know that that we always try and focus on the good things, the positives of what you can do and re- and reaffirm all that. But today we're going to have to focus on the negatives to make sure that you can continue getting the getting the help that you need. Mhm. And yeah, you you've always you've always tried to make it clear to me that it's a temporary, a temporary uh, conversation to view it as such. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Because there are a lot of times where the, there is a negative aspect, but at the same time there's also a positive that can come from that. Mm -hmm. uh, where part of it can be viewed as negative, part of it can be viewed as positive. Uh, so it's helpful as well to have that, uh, to have that affirmation mm -hmm. that it's temporary, it's a temporary point of view that we have to do to get the help. Right. Yes, and they can feel very daunting and exhausting because it's the opposite of how we live our daily lives. Yeah. Which is to focus on those things that trip you up, those things that are most difficult for you, those things that are not working. Um, uh, are the things we have to focus on. Now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whereas... And we don't want to get stuck in that. Right. You know? It, if, I, if I had bought into all the things that I was told you couldn't do, you know, I, I mean, you'd just be a little mush. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you'd just be, you know, I, I'm, I'm not taking credit for who you are because you are a great spirit. You are a great light. You know, you love and you just are, you know, you're a shining star. And, you know, I I feel like I've helped to facilitate, you know, you becoming who you are. But I, I didn't make you who you are. And so to man sit around and have other people talk and smack about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a, I hate that. I just do. Yeah. yeah. I do. I don't like it at all. Especially when throughout your life we always, like you said, focused on what you can do. And when things were difficult, we'd figure out a way for it to work. Or we would learn what needs to be excluded. Hmm. You know, so you didn't have to... You found a, found a workaround, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I don't like that at all. But, but you know, Connor is going through this stuff too. And I go to the school meetings and the, you know, uh, I, his, I, his, uh, not his IEP, his uh, ABA, mm -hmm. you know, therapies. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a good thing to help to just to move him forward. But I always think that my experience with people with autism across the board has been positive and I think that it's so important just to not expect other people to don't have a preconceived notion on how somebody else should behave you know what I mean so I just think about that I'm like so what if I have it wrong like, like what? If, like we talk about a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, your way is pretty pure. Your way is pretty right on. You know, it's like though well, this is this is how how this is. This is the, you know, yeah. what you observe, what you, you yeah. know. And it, it's it's never a thing about judging someone or whatever. Yeah, it's. Just accepting things as is, I guess, is part of it. Well, and I think to not to to not have the mindset that somebody else has to behave the same way that you do in order for it to be okay. You know, that's pretty boring. <laughs> if every, you know, if everybody was all the same, it's pretty boring. But you did struggle growing up. You really did. There was it was. Uh, we we talk about how. To stay positive and how to to do the best that you can. There were days, and I just said this to somebody else. I was working as an EMT, and I had to quit work because the school called me so much every day, every day. The principals, the teachers, oh, wow. every day, and it got to a point where I just can't, I can't do that anymore. Um. So to quit, and um, and I don't want you to feel bad about that because um, after that, I was able to be there all the time when 
you know, and, and do the things that needed to be done. And then also and I started doing stand up. Yeah. So, you know, that feels better to me than as my therapy. <laughs> yeah. Stand up stand up is my therapy. Yeah. 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 So your idea is probably to your recommendation would be for parents that maybe they're little their young kids are just being diagnosed you're thinking maybe go ahead and tell them if they're if they're capable of understanding what that means at that time yes if not lead up to it and over time with the And this is from my experience, at mm-hmm. least, sure. is to lead up to it with the affirmation that you're okay as you are, that we, that you're loved and accepted as you are, mm-hmm. and that and that if you have a label of any kind it doesn't mean that's all you are Mm -hmm. and the diagnosis the thing that I said to you when we first talked about it too and that I've told you through your life is that we talk about this like this we have this diagnosis Mm -hmm. and it has a name and we use this so that we can understand that we are speaking about the same subject that we can make sense of it, can we can understand it. Um, so the diagnosis having a, 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 a name helps everybody else to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the diagnosis itself, the name, you're who you are. Yeah. So it's really to help the rest of us yeah. to have intelligent conversations that are about the same thing. That's it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have to go. I'm going, I'm, since your dad can't see, I have to drive him down to an appointment. Okay. So, um, yeah. All so, right. so we got to, we got to uh, cut this one off. Um, I like your new shoes. They say what on them? Hey Dude. Is the brand, yeah. Is a branch a shoe called Hey Dude? They look like slippers. <laughs> do they they feel good though? Yeah, they do. They're slip ons. Mm-hmm. And they look they're kinda like a Hush mod- puppy. I don't know what I'm, you don't know what Hush Puppy is? When I was growing up they look kinda like a like Pappy's shoes. Like his dress shoes at times. Mm. Uh they look like a cross between moccasins and mm. uh, hush old, puppies, but you don't know what a hush puppy is. Old man I'll shoes. Show you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, old man, are they comfortable? Very. All right, <laughs> good deal. Yeah. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out with us again, and um, we uh, will be doing this again next week. I can't wait to get back all the paperwork and stuff about the. The testing that you just yeah, went through. Yeah. It's like, oh, you did testing, and I answered these questions, and then they, uh, uh, craziness all over <laughs> again. But I, I'm kind of excited to get that back, and yeah. um, um, we'll talk about that. But everybody, I hope that you're doing well, that you're healthy and you're happy. Um, please give us five stars wherever you listen to us. That would be awesome. And um, check out the website, sonyaking.com, S-O-N-Y-A-K-I-N-G. I keep on telling you that we're going to put pictures up there of Josh's space but with Dave Dave is the computer guy he does it all for me and he, he can't, can't see, see. <laughs> so, so so um yeah that's gonna have to wait a little bit um I would say probably about a week hopefully he's seeing okay then but yeah. anyway we'll, we'll let you know when that's up but um mm-hmm. If you have any uh, thing that you want us to talk, want us to talk about, please let us know. Send us messages. We always love hearing from you. Yeah. And um, yeah. So take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. And uh, love you. Bye.